Okay, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much love, prayers, blessings, and salutations to the elect that's teaching this word in sincerity and in truth, and that's teaching in the name of Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. All right, before I get into the lesson, you know, I just want to say this, um, you know, this word is only for the elect, and only the elect will have understanding of these scriptures in its perfect form, you know, in its truth, okay? And starting with truth, the first thing is the Lord have to open your spirit up to believe in his name, okay? It is truth out here, not just truth mixed with lies, okay? And, you know, the Lord have given this truth, starting with our apostles and elders, you know, of Great Millstone down to us younger brothers, and it's about faith, you know? You can pick and choose what you want to believe. You can do what you want to do, but the Lord is going to allow his elect and open up their understanding to receive his name. And with his name, his true name, comes his word, okay? And they'll be delivered. And, um, you know, Ezekiel 33, 33, then you shall know there was a prophet among you when these things come to pass. So with that being said, um, the true name of the Lord of the, the Father is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahweh Shah, okay? And, um, you know, basically this topic is about Gentile. What is a Gentile? You know, Lord willing, I'm just going to keep it real basic, simple, and Lord willing is short and edifying for our brothers out there that may, you know, need to get this understanding that they might be battling with it because, you know, just coming in and so forth. You know, it's just going to be basic and simple, man. And uh, what is a Gentile? All right. So let me take you here to... The Zion the Van Bible Dictionary. All right. And, you know, this Zion the Van Bible Dictionary right here. So I get it. It's basically, you know, a tool that's needful for you to have, you know, in your arsenal so you can look up words. And it's a couple of words. It's a couple of, you know, like the word Gentile, Hellenist. You know, a couple of words that this bi this con compact Bible dictionary is, is very edifying, you know, to proving that the scriptures is true. And this book was created by a devil, you know, the, the so-called, you know, scholars of Edom, you know, telling the truth about the Bible. All right. And that's why I'll say in order for you to purchase, um, you know, this dictionary, you will have to, you know, buy it off online, Amazon. And it's only for $7.49. Okay? So, let me go on to this. So, now, what is a Gentile? All right? This is the word Gentiles in the Zion of Van Bible Dictionary. Gentiles, nation people. Usually, it means a non-Israelite people. It says Gentiles, nation people. Usually, it means a non-Israelite people. So, by this definition, it's letting you know that the word Gentile can go two ways. Because it says usually it means a non-Israelite people. All right. And to have understanding is that when the Lord created the nations, he created a chosen seed that he was going to give his covenant to. All right. Which is the nation of Israel. OK. And you have the rest of the nations which wasn't given the law, statutes, and commandments. And the Lord referred to them as heathens and Gentiles. Then it's a point, it's, it's time, it's points in the times where our forefathers, you know, made the Lord angry for our forefathers worshiping, you know, idols, false gods, committing adultery and not keeping the Lord's laws. He kicked us out of the land of Israel and cast us through the four corners. All right. Amongst the heathens and called us heathens, too. And Gentiles, you know, and real quick, this is uh second edges, chapter six. And um, we'll start at 54. It says, and these are, and after these, Adam also, whom thou madest the Lord over thy creatures of him, come we all and the people also whom thou hast chosen. You see. 
All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. As for the other people which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing, but be like unto spittle, and hast likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. Okay, and I just wanted to grab that point real quick, you know, um, because you have to understand that the Lord called his people Gentiles as well, which are the Israelite foreigners. Okay, and you have a couple of scriptures here. And the first scripture they have in its definition is Judges 4 and 2. Okay, so let's get that. All right, this is Judges chapter 4, verse 1. It says, And the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord when Ehud was dead. And the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, that reigned in Hazor, the captain of whose host was Sheshera, which dwelleth in Hoshev of the Gentiles. You see? Now, the first thing, let's read. It says, And the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan. So now to understand what nation and people was Jabin, which was a king of Canaan, you know, basically, you, go, you can go here, you know. Genesis 10 and 5, you know, because this is the lineage, you know, when the Lord divided Shem, Ham, and Japhet. It says Genesis 10 and 5. By these were the owls of the Gentiles, there go that word again, divided in their lands, every one after his tongue and after their families and their nations. And the sons of Ham, because the Ham, the Hamites are the Africans. And so the sons of Ham, which are the Africans today, as we know them, it says in the sons of Ham, Cush and Mizraim and Put and Canaan. Canaan. Okay, so now with that being said, jumping back, it says, and the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan. And when to understand more about Jabin, the king, you can get into Joshua, the 11th chapter. You know, it talks about the Jabin, the king of Canaan that, you know, raised war, gathered princes of the lands warring against Israel. And the Lord delivered all of those princes in those lands until the Israelites, until the, the hands of Joshua, okay? And um, also, there's another jabbing, because when you read and find out, you know, the, the, the king of Canaan, you know, they will call all the kings, you know, I want to say all, but they would give this title jabbing to a king that was ruling at the time of Canaan, because it was another time where Deborah and Barak and Joshua, the fourth chapter, they delivered, you know, they gathered Israel, I think, a uh, 100,000, if I'm not mistaken, to actually get victory, breaking out of the captivity of Jabin, the king of Canaan. OK, so now it says that rain in Hazor, the captain of whose host was Sheshera, which dwelt in Heroshev of the Gentiles. So now we go into the word Gentile. Strong's age, 1471. Goy. Goy. Right now, there's the blue letter definition. It says nation, people, nation, people, usually of non Hebrew people. Why well, say usually? Because it can be referred to Hebrew people, which are the Israelites at times, depending on the context of the word Gentile being used. It says of the descendants of Abraham, of Israel, of swarm of locusts, of the animals, Goyim, nations. All right. But hey, that key word, usually of non-Hebrew people. So, uh, you know, jumping back here in this uh, Judges 4, uh, Judges uh, 4 and 2, you, you have Gentiles. And we know that the Lord is talking about the heathens. I read it again. And the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, that reigned in Hazor, the captain of whose host was Sheshua, which dwelt in Heroshev. Of the Gentiles. So the Lord called these heathens, which is given the law, statutes, and commandments, Gentiles. All right. So now we have another scripture in here, which is Isaiah 11 and 10. Okay. So let's start. Uh, Isaiah 11 and 10. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, which, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. 
to it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. So now we have the word Gentile in this case. What is this Gentile talking about? You go into the blue letter. It's the same definition, Goya. Nation, people, nation, people, usually of non-Hebrew people. Same thing, right? But now it says, let me read it again. And, and in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, which is David's father, which is the seed of David's father, which shall stand for an ensign, because you had David, you had his father, you had David, you had Yahweh Shah. Because this ensign is talking about Yahweh Shah. Of the people, to, to it says to it, it's like it. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentile, the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. So, you know, you got people saying this word Gentiles, the heathen. So you, you would say, oh, the Gentiles are going to seek rest because they're going to come in the fold. You know, you got groups out there, churches and other people of these diff of the circumcision camps that know that the Israelite, they say that because the Israelites went off, uh, the doors was open to the rest of the world, the rest of the people of the world. That's not the case, man. This Gentiles right here is talking about Israel, which is the Israelite foreigners. Okay? And, you know, just to back up the quick scripture about this is Yahweh Shah. This is um Matthews, I believe is yeah, 1 and 21. There you go. Uh, this is Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai, for he shall save his people from their sins. All right? So that's how you know that's talking about Yahweh Shai. Okay? So I'm going to read it again. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people, Yahweh Shai, to it shall the Gentiles, which is the Israelite foreigners, seek and his rest shall be glorious because, you know, you read about Paul, you know, uh, you know, Paul, matter of fact, let's get that real quick. This is, um, what was it? Acts 9 and 15. Yep. Acts 9 and 15. What is this? Let's jump up some. You know, Paul was to go to be the light. Well, to go and gather the uh the Israelite foreigners, the, which they was calling themselves Gentiles. It says Acts chapter nine verse fifteen. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles, and kings and the children of Israel. So Paul was sent to go to the Israelite foreigners. Okay? So now jumping back. This is uh, Isaiah 11 and 11. I'll read 11 and 10. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and, and his rest shall be glorious. And it, and it shall come to pass in that day. Because look, it's going to get into and let you know this word Gentile is talking about the Israelite foreigners. It says, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again. The second time to recover the remnant of his people. This is prophecy because the first time was the first. The first time was the uh, Lord gathering us together out of Egypt. Okay, with, by the hands of Moses. So let's read. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time. The second time to recover the remnant of the, his people. See, see, it's plain and simple right here. It's plain and simple right here, man. Getting excited, you know, because it's telling you right here. When when did the Lord open this up to the other nations? They was never given the law, statutes, and commandments. The Lord made a promises. He made a covenants with our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He made them his, his chosen seed. So I'm going to read it again. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left in Assyria and from Egypt and from Patros and from Cush and from Elam and from Sinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea and he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel 
and gathered together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Man, it, it can't, it, it's nothing more to say. I wrap this lesson up right now. That's it. That's this point is proven. Point is proven right then and there, man. You know? But, um, you know, for edification's sake, uh, back into the Zion the Van Bible Dictionary, you know, you get into the word uh, Hellenist, you know? Sorry, I don't want to make this lesson so long. All right? Now, this is Hellenist. It says, Jews who made Greek their tongue and with it adopted Greek ideas and practices. And it gives you two verses. Read it again. Hellenists, Jews who made Greek their tongue and with it uh, often adopted Greek ideas and practices. Okay? So, let's get Acts 6 and 1. Acts 6 and 1. And it says, And in those days, when the number of the disciples were multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Okay? So these were Grecians were Hellenist Jews, which it says, Jews who made Greek their tongue and with it adopted. Uh, it's like it and with it often adopted Greek ideas and practices so now you get into the word Grisha it says in Hellenists because they was Hellenized okay they took on the customs and the ways of the heathen but they were Israelites by the seed that's just like for an example if um you got a Jake you got a I'll say I'll use Judah the Negro okay he goes into China he marries a Moabite woman, all right? He has a baby by a Moabite woman. Now, he's raising his child in China. He has a Moabite, his child's mom is a Moabite. Now the child may have features as a Jake. You know, he has a spirit. He, he's his line and his seed is from Israel, but he looked like a Moabite. He act like a Moabite. He talks like a Moabite. He learns their language, he learns their culture, and he worships their gods. Okay? He will be called an Hellenist. He will be a, 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 a Moabite-speaking Jew. Okay? And then forth, in all reality, amongst, you know, most of the times, because Jake stand out, being that he's an Israelite, he may perceive and present himself you know, as a Moabite, you know, I am Japanese, I am Chinese. And then he may be a great fighter or he may be this, uh, you know, excellent basketball player because this, his spirit is an Israelite and he may stand out and then he date Chinese women. You know, the people of the world go, oh, he's Chinese. But in all reality, in the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh because the seed is passed down through the father, he is an Israelite, man. And what we just read in Isaiah 11 and 10, we was going to be dispersed throughout the four corners. We was going to come from each and every of one of these nations, man, because we were once dispersed among them. And through generation and through generation, you know, our seed is mangled with their, with their seed. Now, do that seed ever get lost? No, because the seed comes with the father. Now, would the look of a typical Israelite, a southern tribe or a northern tribe will be the case. You will be now we will be stripped when that, if that's the case, we'll be stripped from our, you know, what you normally think a Jacob look like, an Israelite should look like. He'll be stripped from that. He'll end up looking like a heathen, but his spirit will be of an Israelite. All right. So it says Hellenist, one who imitates, see? Imitates. The manner and customs or the worship of the Greeks and use the Greek tongue. Just like today, you got Jake calling, they, you got Jake that's Hellenized today calling themselves African American. And a lot of celebrities say this oh, I'm American. I'm not African. I'm just American. 
I was born here. I live here. I was never in Africa. I am an American. I am not an African American. I am an American. It's the same shit that happened back then, man. It says, Hellenist, one who imitates the manners and customs or, or, or the worship of the Greeks and use the Greek tongue. Used in the New Testament of Jews born in foreign lands and speaking Greek. Okay? And another scripture real quick that comes into mind is Joel. Oh, uh, well, I think it's the third chapter. I'm not mistaken. Um... Yep, yep. Uh, Joel chapter 3 and verse 6. It says, the children also of Judah, because this is, hap this is you know, hey, let me read. it says, the children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians that ye might remove them far from their border. I just want to say one, one thing too, you know, to have understanding too, when the Lord talks about Judah, like, like in this, this particular verse, the children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem. You know, the Lord can say the children of Jerusalem, but what he's referring to could be the northern tribes. You know, because the Lord, this Bible is a, is a mystery. You need the understanding of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, you know, given to, the, to our apostles because we learn from men, all right? Given to the apostles and then the Lord putting the spirit upon you to get into the work for yourself you know, that's why the Lord said, blessed if he that readeth, because then you come across these things and you know who the Lord is talking about. All right. Because it's times in the scriptures, the Lord will say Judah, but really he's just referring to the southern tribes. OK, it don't necessarily just be that tribe, Judah. And then he say the children of Israel, he could ref he be he referring it sometimes in the context of the scripture. He could be referring that word Israel as the northern tribes or Israel could be referred to as the whole nation. You see? So it says, the children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians. All right. And get Grecian in the Zion of Van Bible Dictionary. All right. Bear with me. I'm trying to. I just can't wait up. All right, here we go. Uh, it was Greece. All right, it's under Greece. So it says Greece, Grecia, Grecians. Grecia is Greece, the home of the Hellenist Greeks and Grecians. However, are to be distinguished. You see, when you call someone a Grecian, back then, you know, they called themselves Grecians, you know, uh, Hellenists. You know, it's a distinguished, meaning it can go two ways. It can be an actual Greece that's an Edomite, or it can be a actual Jew speaking a Jew that believes he's a Greek. So it says Grecia is Greece and home of the Hellenists. Greeks and Grecians, however, are to be distinguished. Greeks are generally those of Hellenistic race. Acts 16 and 1. 18 and 4, and probably John 12 and 20. But the word may be used to indicate non-Jews, foreigners, and aliens. Grecians were Greek-speaking Jews, folk of the dispersion from the areas predominantly Greek. Okay? So now, jumping back, it says, and the children, of, and the children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians? So now, what this Grecia is talking about? It's talking about the Edomites, because we were actually sold unto the Edomites, that ye might remove them far from their border. See, kicked out of our land and removed far from our border. Look where we at now. Look where the Israelites. We on the other side of the world. We on the western part of the world. When we was had our great land of milk and honey on the eastern part of the world, we are far from our border. OK, it says, behold, matter of fact, it says, behold, I will raise them up out of a place whether ye have sold them and will return your recompense upon your own head. So wherever Israel from, you know, the times we were sold going years back, wherever Israel dispersed to, wherever if they went to the islands, 
you know, if they, you know, uh, the speak with the, uh, wherever, wherever they went to on the earth, the Lord said that he was going, I will raise them out of the place, whether ye have sold them and will return a recompense upon your own head because judgment is coming upon you Edomites, man. Okay. Recompense is coming. And it says, and I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah. And they shall sell them to the Sabians, to a people far off, for the Lord have spoken it. So you reap what you sow. All right. All right. So with that, I hope it was edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And much love, prayers, blessings, and salutations to the elect. Shalom.